So as soon as the ancient Egyptians start to be buried with things in their tombs, like 5000 BCE, essentially tomb robbing begins almost immediately. And as an archeologist, you just need to assume that the tomb that you're excavating has been robbed before you got there because it happened so utterly frequently. And the Egyptians thought that it was really important to include objects in your tomb. I mean, the afterlife was considered like life on earth, but without any problems, so you still needed stuff. Tombs essentially have two different types of generic objects within them. You have objects that help you get into the afterlife, things with magical spells on them, like the Book of the Dead or your scarabs. Or you have objects that you're going to use in the afterlife once you're already there. Things like food and clothing and furniture. You have things like your perishable goods, so they're actually buried with real food and real flowers. Now, once those are underground, you're probably not going to want to reuse them. But there's a lot of durable goods, too. Things like furniture and linen that even if you get some dirt on them, you can still reuse them. And the most valuable objects are going to be your metal and your semi-precious stone. Obviously, if they thought there were precious metals, that would go first. So gold or bronze would be among the things they would be first looking for. But they would know, based on the social level of the tomb they were going to rob, what the likelihood would be. Once you took all of these objects that people had made and just put them in the ground, you're essentially like taking wealth out of society just to bury it. But at the same time, tomb robbing was a highly immoral and unethical act. Most people did not do this because when you steal things from a tomb, you are also harming the afterlife for the person in the tomb too. And most people took this very, very, very seriously. Tomb robbing would have been a major crime in ancient Egypt. Clearly, there were severe corporal punishments for tomb robbers. But one of the worst things is the curses. Because not only would you as the tomb robber suffer, but the curses would damn oftentimes your wife and your children, sometimes even your grandchildren. So, yes, it was a grave crime to rob a tomb in ancient Egypt. However, that did not stop people. The economic consequences of that level of real organized crime, which is what happened in the end of the New Kingdom, we actually see a lot of material that was stolen out of these tombs surface in the royal burials at Tanis in the 21st and 22nd dynasties. And almost certainly, we see the what had been earlier stuff that's been melted down and reformed into new things as well. So you might ask who the tomb robbers are. They are not who you think. From most of our evidence, we know that the majority of tomb robbers were actually middle and upper class people. They're not starving, but they are the people with the opportunity and they're the people with the means. Sometimes they have inside knowledge. Occasionally they are the same priests that supposedly buried the dead and then, you know, just skim some things off the top. Sometimes you have sailors or craftsmen or quarrymen or just your officials that found the record in the back of the palace or found the record in the back of the archives as to where a tomb was. They are the people with the means to do it. Once you take the items out of the tomb, you need to fence them, right? You need to actually turn them over. So they have marketplaces in Egypt where you can go and trade goods. So if you go up to the, you know, the marketplace 100 miles from your house where nobody recognizes you, you might be able to trade some goods there, especially things like linen or furniture that is unidentifiable. If you have things like metal, you can also melt them down and turn them into scrap. That's where you need a system of craftsmen to help you out. You end up expanding your criminal network to get specific craftsmen to maybe wash in a particular item or take a name off an object or resell it or reuse it on that particular level to kind of like um, launder your theft in some ways. 
a lot of tombs, especially with above ground structures or pyramids on top, essentially are a giant X marks the spot on where stuff actually is. And so tomb robbing happens pretty quickly after somebody dies. It can happen within hours, days, weeks, years, months, uh, and then several, several years later too. In addition to that, tombs aren't just robbed once. Tombs are robbed multiple times through their history. It's more like a small drip of items coming out of the tomb over years and years to come. There are times in history when tomb robbing is more common, specifically during the intermediate periods, times of war, also times when the government is not centralized, because that's when tombs are not protected as well, and when tombs are more of an opportunity for wealth for officials. That's the time when officials end up gathering together loads of workmen to actively rob the tombs so that they can earn the money for their cause at that point. Intermediate periods for ancient Egypt are a sort of a convenient way for us to distinguish between times when there were very strong dynasties of kings on the throne, where centralized authority was not questioned, and we can talk about uh, a predictable succession from king to king. Then there are periods where, for a variety of different reasons, um, that strong centralized uh, autocracy weakens, and you have um, a, a movement of power into regional areas. And that's what intermediate periods uh, really represent. If we look at the textual evidence that looks back on them, oh, there were times of turmoil, they were upside down, the poor have become rich, and everybody, you know, is, is everything's wrong, those texts are written by the elite. So it depends whose point of view. From the point of view of the non-elite, what we find is oftentimes there was a, how shall I put it, a redistribution of wealth that perhaps was not as, um, didn't seem as bad to those who were benefiting from it than others. So there are multiple ways to protect your tomb. And the primary way to protect a tomb is to have guards in a cemetery. So these guards are really the most effective when the government is centralized and strong, when they're paid, and when the corruption of local officials is low. And we actually have a number of trials of tomb robbers specifically in the New Kingdom who are um, arrested for robbing the tombs. They're put on trial. They're actually publicly killed <laughs> and impaled on stakes in the city. Their death was a deterrent for possible future tomb robbers. And yet it was still so profitable that you in fact do still have tomb robbing. <laughs>